What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my Mystic Spear Hand Guide. My Mystic Spear Hand is probably the best Dragoon type fantasy I have ever seen in a game, like more so than in Final Fantasy games, which is ironic. Uh, but it's just a, a incredibly potent class. It has access to not only the strongest defensive in the game, but probably one of the strongest defensives I've seen in a game ever. Uh, we have a ton of freedom in our playstyle. We have rapid attacks with the spin to win. We're able to dash over gaps that we wouldn't wise other be able to cross unless we had like levitate or something. So we have really good mobility. We can refill our own stamina in an instant that allows for us to spam our ultimate skill. And all in all, it's just an incredibly well-rounded package. In fact, I would say that in terms of just pure balance, I think this might be the class that's the most well-rounded in the sense that it can tackle all the content in the game and never be at risk whatsoever if built right. So let's jump in. We will take a look at the setup here. And what's nice about this, just to be clear, like Thief, obviously we have Formless Fate, which is busted. But imagine if we could just take that immunity and apply it to our entire party. That's what we can do with Mystic Spear here. So either way, taking a look at the gear. We have two real choices for our spear at the end of the game. We have Lindworm Fang or we have Renwit. Now, Renwit is going to be a little bit weaker, but it has ice built in. So that's a consideration. If you don't like running around with a pawn that is going to put affinity on your weapon, uh, this is a solid alternative to the Lindworm Fang. As for the gear, the Dragon Knight's Helm, the Duelist's Coat, and the Strider's Greaves would be our ideally best pieces for this build. Now there is one other piece I want to call out and it's a pair of legs. Where did they go? The mercenaries. So, or excuse me, here we go. Uh, the mercenary hosen is going to have five to slash and strike res, which is really nice. Uh, we also have 10% silence, but we will take more damage from fire and lightning. So on top of having lower defense and magic defense. So to be honest, I'm not sure if that's going to be better. I think the defensive gap there isn't going to be enough to offset having the slash and strike resistance. Uh, so in general, I would stick with the mostly dragon forge gear with this class. Uh, similar to the other melee classes we've covered so far, go with whatever you want for the cape. And then I like going for vehemence as well as triumph. But, you know, rings are so flexible. You could really want whatever you want. You could do like a more damage while you're lighter weight. You could do aggro. You know, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, jumping on over and taking a look at our skills. So to start, we have Dragon's Fin. Now, Dragon's Fin is an absolute starter skill uh, in the sense that it's the first ability you get. But it is also on my kit every single time I play a Mystic Spear Hand. The mobility on this is just insane. You can kill a skeleton and then immediately follow up the snipe the head. You can, the, just, just the movement potential of this alone, being able to cross gaps you couldn't otherwise cross is huge. Like you're trying, the bridge is out, well, you're probably gonna be able to jump and then do this. Or if you're a warfare, you could levitate into this or do a thief jump into it. It's just insane. I love Dragon's Fin. Sieging Storm, I am not a fan of at all. Uh, this is like nice extra DPS, like you're just tossing this out while you're fighting, but in terms of the other abilities you have available, this does not take a slot. There's way, way better stuff. Uh, Devout Offering, this is very fun. It's a good flavor ability. You know, you're literally force throwing people. Uh, all you need to do is stagger an enemy and then you can pick them up and force throw them. If you are playing with a mage that has frigger you can pick up the ice chunks the mage is creating and chuck those too you're able to obviously chuck stuff that's in the environment very fun flavor from this but unfortunately i think it falls off in comparison to some other abilities ravenous hand this is wild uh ravenous hand can take your stamina to zero to 100 in like two seconds and you know stamina is the name of the game here so this always goes on especially if you're using wild fury if you're not worried about your stamina, you're not going uh, spam ability heavy, you can get away without using this, but the fact to instantly refill your stamina is fantastic. And there we have it, Mirror Shield. Now, I'm not running Mirror Shield right now because, to be frank, with at the level I'm at, Mirror Shield, just th there's no challenge. Uh, but this is arguably the strongest ability in the game. To break down how this works, this is a invulnerable shield that stops all incoming damage. It stops incoming knockback. It applies to your entire team. You can, you know, as long as you're managing your stamina, you can basically keep this up infinitely. Uh, and that's just wild because it's, it's invulnerability. You are preventing everything 
from coming in while Mirror Shield is up. This is designed to allow you to just cakewalk whatever you want. At level 60, honestly, I don't think it's necessary, but you know, it needs to be pointed out just how busted this ability is. As opposed to using that, I have Sky Dragon's Feast on. Uh, this serves as kind of a perfect dodge, but I also like this because I can combo it with Dragon's Fin. I can use Dragon's Fin to dash and then Sky Dragon's Feast to get on top of the target. So using those in conjunction is a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, personally, I just, I, I like the flair of having a dodge in combat as opposed to just being like, lol, shield, you can't touch me. So very much a personal preference there. But if you're trying to be optimal, I would suggest Mirror Shield in place of Dragon's Feast. On to Heaven, the ultimate yeet. This is a really fun ability. Uh, it's, it's a little bit goofy in the sense that you're not really getting like loot or anything when you kill these targets. You are literally just yeeting them away. But it can be really fun. And there's a lot of fights where there's just a lot of little stuff and you can just pick them all up, yeet them away, and then remove them from the fight to focus on the bigger target. So decent ability. Um, the, the attack on it doesn't really do a lot of damage. So unfortunately, this is only really useful at trouncing little dudes. Magic Spear Gone. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that one. Uh, this one can do some decent damage, but I've actually also found this fairly hard to use. The spear, it's like as you charge it, the, the reticle starts to vibrate all over. And I found that unless you are weak point sniping with this, it's really not worth it. So it can do some damage and it does give you a stronger dedicated magic ability in your kit. But in general, I think this tends to fall off compared to other things just because you're stationary to charge this up and fire it. Uh, moments charge this one I'm, I'm just not a big fan of you know you can hold down that button to charge up your bolts in combat so being able to instantly charge up your bolts just it seems very unnecessary um, you know as I'm attacking I'm always holding down the class action to continually charge my bolt so like I said I, just, I don't really see a use case for this one and then lastly wild fury you create a clone of yourself and just pump damage super fun ability can chain between targets can pump a ton of damage out uh, it's not going to kill as fast as like Thief, but it still does very respectable damage and shouldn't be slept on. Moving on over to the Augments. As always, Dynamism and Zeal. We have Lethality because we do a decent job at weak point sniping with this class. Athleticism once again, Dominance once again. And in the last slot, you can really run with whatever you want uh, because I tend to do a lot of like diving and exploring using the Dragon's Fin. I like Radiance on this class because I tend to, to pull ahead from the pack a lot. Uh, in Unmoored World, you don't really need Radiance, but I mean, at this point, we're, we're so good. You could put on whatever you want, to be honest. You could buff your defense up a little bit. You could do few for the additional weight. You could add more raw stamina into your kit. Uh, defense, subtlety, so you can, you know, attack without worrying about aggro. It's it's really whatever for that last slot. All right. Um, now, one thing I want to talk about before we jump into battle is proper use of Redoubted Bolt. So we're going to hold this. And now that it's charged, we can then chain. So the idea is when it hits, we either tap it again to do the AoE or we tap A to change charge into the target. You can actually do the the charge where it expands on the target and then you hit a to follow up on the target the timing on it is definitely a little bit tricky but it is possible so if you are all in on this class that would be something to practice uh, i'm going to try and pull it off against the dragon like i said getting both the timing is fairly difficult to pull off but with a little bit of luck i'll be able to get it but are we safe here so yeah anytime i'm running around and exploring like this like i'm already you know i'm just going to be charging that constantly and this does have a second level of charge. I, I'm not sure if that impacts like how long the ability lasts or something. I haven't been able to tell, but there is a second level of charge just to be aware of. There we go, we got the heart open. You can ultimately just keep enemies completely pinned down doing this. Which is one of the things that makes it just so insanely good. Looks like we got Celestial Pain up, so... A brief moment of not worrying about stamina at all. But once I get low, Ravenous Hand. On knockdowns, you're you're gonna be best off going for uh, 
through your, your Wild Fury. Show the dash instead. And just dash right up onto the target. And this is where the mirror shield would come in in a big way. You could just toss that down. And then even if meteors are coming, it doesn't matter. Pretty busted class, though. I mean, even just our our, uh, our class action, being able to toss that out and effectively just lock down enemies almost indefinitely, that alone is huge. It's the, uh, you know, it's like a Dragoon and a Jedi had a baby. Trying to get the double. I promise it's possible, it's just very hard to hit the timing on it. There we go. Uh, another thing, anytime you're fighting stuff that's weak to magic damage, just doing a regular triangle attack is still very effective. Keep in mind this is a hybrid class. So if you want a physical, we're gonna pump out something like Wild Fury. That's why I like Sky Dragon's Feast, just pump that out. We can also use- oh, I was gonna say we can use it to get away in combat too. And this isn't gonna be as potent as the, uh, the spam ability on the Thief. But it will still do your spin to win, will do respectable damage. Caves this. Wait, is that a different cave? That is a different cave. Oh, that cave should have a chimera in it as well and a bunch of trash, but let's see, where is that? A bridge. Thank you kindly. I chimera we were fighting was over here. Still in one piece. That's something. I'm also a really big fan of the heavy attack execute on the class. I get the knockdown. Probably better off doing it on a, uh, a Saurian. Sky Dragon's Fin, though, man. It's just so good. Look at that distance covering. Like I said, you can use that to, to cross gaps of water, to cross areas where the rock is shattered. It's just super, super good. It seems naught can be done to hold them now. Yeah, very satisfying. You like stab into them and then do a magic explosion to to blow off the tail. I'll have the party wait. We'll, we'll solo this thing. I would have preferred not to have to fight so soon, but at least I know I'm up to the challenge. Try not to get hit. We're gonna say hello to the goat. I'm gonna get the stamina. And then back on top of it. And while we're riding it, we can even just go to the spin to win.
It's like a dragoon rodeo rider. And the goblin slapped me off as I was finishing it. There we go. That's one dead chimera. I guess the thing that draws me into this game so much, man, is like... All, all the locations are just so much fun to play. You're just doing such crazy shit, you know? I just flew on top of that thing, did a spin to win blade dance on top of its head. Like... That's wild, man. Let's see. Is so that's like Gorko? Yeah, I could go through Gorko Cavern and fight another another uh, Chimera, but is it really needed? That's what I'm talking about. Like if I had to cross this ledge, I could... Look at that! Look at that distance! Look at that distance! That's so insane! Like, even when I play Warfare, I, I will very frequently bring along Sky Dragon's Fin just because I'm like, oh... You are the, the travel ability of the gods. You can dash into anything. Which actually, I think this is like the back entrance into the cavern. Doesn't matter for Sky Dragon's Fin, we're just going in the back door. See what I'm talking about? Like, it's so wild. Let's see what's in here. Let's take a peek. Actually, I think with the... Yeah, never mind. We're gonna... We can, we can say hi to some Saurians real fast. these things that are weak to magic. This is a good use case for just using your, your triangle attack. Because that blade beam is going to consistently chunk those enemies. Oh, we have one of you down here. Oh, I tried to time it. I was going to do the dodge at the last second and I whiffed it. Counterattack. I want to. I want to get the. Oh, he died. Oh, hey, we found a fell lord though. We can start adding that into our uh, showcase of stuff to kill. Uh, either way though, that is going to wrap things up for the Mystic Spearhand. Definitely, just an incredibly fun class to play. Another very satisfying one. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Magic Archer next. Uh, I actually have like two Magic Archer builds. One that is more of a support build and one that's that's pure damage build so we're going to be taking a look at the pure damage variant first and then i'll probably get to the support build a little bit later but either way thanks for coming by catch y'all soon with more